Hey y'all, it's Lola the manager, your new favorite project manager, tech junkie, and entrepreneur. This is episode eight of Life as a Project Manager. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about different types of project management software that I have used or that you may use as you enter this space. So every time you start a new job, there's different software or platforms that you'll be introduced to. So the fact that you have to open up Outlook for your email, that's a platform. The fact that you need to go to Slack so you can message your coworkers, that's a platform. And so there are different software and platform that you utilize at work every day. However, when it comes to managing projects, there's only a certain type of software that you'll use for that. Now, before we can talk about the specific software, I want to talk about the types of software that you can utilize. So there's three main types. You have the types that focus on the traditional waterfall predictive style of project management. Then you have the ones that focus on the agile side of project management. And then you have the ones that are really collaborative that allow you to work with others in the actual project management software. So let's break them down. Now, if you don't know what a traditional waterfall or predictive type of project is, you need to go back and watch my video where I talked about the five phases of the project life cycle, but I'll reiterate it here. Traditional projects focus on developing detailed plans and forecasting what could potentially happen so you can follow the different phases and the different stages from beginning to end. And because of this, you need software that allows you to house all that documentation in a certain type of way and format and structure so that everyone knows what's going on before we even get started. So that once we get started, we can stay on track and follow the plan and the software as is. An example of software that's really good for traditional types of projects are the smart sheets or the Microsoft Project 365. Those are really good at showing you these different type of charts. It's good at showing you the breakdown of the tasks, the schedules, who's doing what, what tasks come before this. It's very robust, right? But you need that because in a traditional type of project, there's a lot of documentation and a lot of structure and planning that goes in place in order to execute this project. On the agile side of things, these type of projects focus on breaking down the project into these chunks in which we continuously iterate and improve on them. So instead of developing your plans at the beginning and then following them step by step, phase by phase, you actually had a plan of wanting to do something. You broke it down into chunks and you're focused on working on those different chunks, getting feedback, collaborating with your team, collaborating with your stakeholders, and then going back to the next chunk and then the next chunk and then the next chunk. And in this experience of going down this cycle of iteration, you are getting feedback so that at the end you deliver exactly what was asked for because you were continuously improving it throughout the build versus in the traditional type of project where we have a plan at the beginning and our goal is to get there at the end. No improvements throughout the phases. Because of this, it requires you to be flexible and to collaborate and software that do a really good job in allowing you to be very agile are Trello, Azure DevOps, all these different types of software allow you to operate in these sprints. And I'll talk about that in a different video where I break down agile versus traditional, scrum versus Kanban, all those different types of things. We'll get there eventually. And then that last software is that collaborative one, right? And the whole purpose of the collaboration is to ensure that there is open communication, there's transparency in the actual project in itself. So I'll give you an example. In Smartsheets, you can see everything that needs to happen with the project. What you can't see is communication about what's happening in the project within Smartsheets. In order to communicate, you actually have to use a third party software, meaning you would have to reach out to people via Slack, via Teams, or whatever software that your company uses to communicate with your teams. 
Whereas in a collaborative project management software, you're communicating in the actual project. So if we use the example of Trello that I mentioned when I was talking about Agile, in the specific task, you can leave a comment, you can follow up, you can check in right there in the project and you do not have to leave the platform to go somewhere else to communicate and get updates and feedback. So when it comes to the different type of software that I've had the luxury of using, I've used Asana, ClickUp, Jira, Service now smart sheet trello workfront and right right now on the two contracts that i'm working i utilize workfront and service now in my nonprofit, we utilize trello now because of ndas and i don't want to get sued i can't show you what i do at work on workfront and service now however i do show glimpse of it on my tiktok so you may want to go to my tiktok at load the manager to kind of see what i do at work however what i want to show you now is how i would build out a sample project in Trello. So come with me. So this is Trello. Trello is an amazing project management software that allows you to use a combination of agile project management as well as collaborative project management tools in one platform. And so what I created was a sample agile project just to show you what it would look like if you were utilizing a platform like Trello. Now be mindful that the style in which we are looking at Trello Trello right now on the screen. This is known as Kanban style. In the world of Agile, Kanban is a type of framework that is utilized to provide transparency in Agile project management. So on an Agile team, we want to make sure that there is full transparency so everyone can see what everyone is doing at all times. There's no reason to hide information. Also, this prevents knowledge from getting missed, right? So when certain phases of a project complete and then now they need to be handed off to another team if the other team didn't have access to what actually took place in the phase before them some knowledge could get missed some things could fall through the cracks and so what Kanban allows us to do is to put everything on front street back in the days in the beginning phases of software development you would see a large dry erase board with post-it notes on it. Those post-it notes were designed just like this, just like this system that you see right here on the screen. These post-it notes represented the different things that were taking place. And then they would move along the dry erase board to different phases of the project. So everyone can see where we are with different things. And so this same thing is pretty much taking place here. And I'm going to go through the sample that I created, but these cards can be moved just like those post-it notes okay just like those post-it notes so in this sample agile project we have these different lists right different columns that we see across the screen and these different lists we see it says intake and then we see it has different sprints at the top when it comes to intakes we're going to pretend that there are a lot of different projects on the pipeline you can look at intakes the same way that you would look at a project backlog there are different things that need to happen but everything cannot happen at once. So we're going to focus on one thing at a time. So here, our intake that we want to focus on is a company website redesign. I want you to know that I utilized AI software to help me develop this sample. So I prompted it with several different things that I wanted it to have. And then this is what it created. And I'm taking it to create a sample project in Trello. Please note that your projects may not look like this, but this is a good baseline, a good introduction to what that looks like. And so... Uh, this project has what you call a brief. So a project brief or a business case that includes the project name, deliverables, stakeholders, business case, timeline, and team responsibilities. Okay. So in this sample, we're looking at creating a company website redesign. The deliverable meaning the tangible thing that we need at the end of this entire experience is a redesigned website with improved user experience, responsive design, and updated content. As far as stakeholders, we tell you the different type of stakeholders. Now, in the Agile world, in the Scrum world, you have a product owner, you have a Scrum master, and you have a development team. So the stakeholders that you see here are different member 
leaders of the team. We have our business case, the whole purpose of why we even need to do this company website redesign. And then you have your timeline. So this project should be completed in 10 weeks. The development portion of this project will be completed in sprints. And it looks as if it's going to be a total of four sprints, two weeks per sprint. And then we will have our sprint planning meeting every other Monday, sprint review meeting every other Friday. And then these are the roles of the different people in a development team. Here, I added some additional roles because I wanted you to know that a scrum team, an agile team literally consists of a product owner, a scrum master, and a development team. However, depending on how things work at your company, because understand that agile scrum, you really take what you need and you mold it into how you want to utilize it for your company and for your project. I've been on projects where there's a scrum master, there's a project manager, there's a functional manager. You get what I'm saying? There's a business analyst, there's a developer. There's no one size fits all when you're dealing with agile. You're doing what's best to get the results, the end result of that project. So here I added, you know, the breakdown of a product owner, scrum master, business analyst, project manager, and functional manager. So if you were the project manager assigned to build out this Trello board, you would be opening this task or this card and you'll be adding the details of the project in here. Meaning whoever is responsible for this task, it's in here. You're going to add the dates of it. You're going to add the members, right? So who are the people who need to have eyes on this project? You're going to label it. Let's say you want to label it 2024 software. You want to do that. You want to add a checklist. So maybe there's like different steps that need to take place in order to execute this project. You add that checklist. Like I stated, you add dates. If there's any resources, documentation, you add that here as an attachment. And then on the premium version, this is the free version of Trello. In the premium version, you can add extra things where you can add dependencies where this project is connected to another project or it needs to be completed before something else starts. So you can add all those different things things. And then when you're done, you would mark it done. And that's how that is. Now here we see sprints. The thing about scrum is you want to provide the minimum valuable product. So you want to provide a very valuable product. However, you want to use minimum effort. And when I say minimum effort, not like you don't want to give a hundred percent, how much of this can we get done in this short amount of time? Okay. We want to do twice as much work in half the time. How do we do that? So we create these sprints. Now, as you see here, there's four sprints set up and there's different tasks in these sprints that need to be completed. Here, I just kind of created a sample of what it looks like. I want to reiterate that this may not be what it looks like when you are working with a company. It may show up different. There may be a different process. I just needed to create something to show you. So when I click the card, it just has a breakdown of what actually takes place in that task. But this would be assigned to whoever's responsible for completing it. And then one thing about sprints is you want to give a time frame in order to get as much done. And then you talk amongst yourself with your team. Like at the end of the sprint, you have your sprint review. You discuss what worked, what didn't work. What do we need to adjust before we go into the next sprint? And so that's what would be taking place in all of this. Now, let's say we have in sprint one, four tasks that need to get completed. But at the end of the sprint, we realized that we were only able to complete two of them. We would move three and four to sprint two. Now when we're reviewing and planning for sprint two, we're like, well, there's no way we're going to be able to do all of these. So we want to move task seven to sprint three. And then let's say we get to sprint three and we're planning for that. And we're like, yeah, we actually can only do seven and eight in sprint three. And so then now we move over and as we're planning for this, we go through the process of planning. And then when you're done with the sprint, you go through the review process and we're like, yeah, we're not gonna be able to do this. And now we're having a conversation where we're like, we're actually going to need five sprints to knock this out. We're not going to be able to get this done in four. And so with the agile and the scrum, agile is a methodology. So it's the thought and philosophy behind what we do. Scrum is the implementation of how we do it. Kanban is the style in which we do the sprint, right? So this is just what, I just want you to kind of know the breakdown of that. In Scrum, you are constantly getting feedback in real time. This is why we have a planning process with sprints. We have a review process with sprint because the team is the expert. They know what realistically makes sense. And because we're getting real-time feedback from our stakeholders while we're working on it versus building out all of this and getting feedback at the end, we can work 
quicker to get to the minimum viable product, that MVP. And so at the beginning, we may have said we can get this done in four sprint, but as we're navigating the process, the team, we decide, hey, we actually need an additional sprint. That's what takes place. And so that was a quick little lesson on Scrum. And I just wanted to show that within these different tasks, you can leave comment and you tag whoever you want to tag and you, you leave that comment and you're communicating directly in here versus going into Slack or Microsoft Teams or sending an email. If I want to say something specific to this task, I can leave a comment in here. And this is why this falls under a collaborative type of project management software. And then it also falls as an agile software because it allows you to customize it in the way that allows you to be a little more flexible instead of rigid with a traditional predictive waterfall type of project. And so one day I hope that I'll have the opportunity to go in more depth with a project like this to where we can build out some characters and flesh out the tasks that need to get done and probably upgrade to the premium so we can add some more features and show you how to create these dependencies where task one has to happen before task two versus both of them happening at the same time or whatever, creating those type of relationships. I want you to be able to know how to do that and maybe we can actually build out a full project with budgets and timelines and all that type of stuff. Now, one thing I do want to point out is in this type of space, you do not need the budget you do not see the budget. And one of the reasons you don't see it is because this isn't the software for that. This is more so for the work to get done. I typically see software like this, Trello, DevOps. I see those with the development team because they're utilizing it to move through their sprints and move through the project versus what you would see if you were developing a traditional project. So I hope that was helpful. One of the things that I want to reiterate is the fact that different companies do things differently. There is no one size fit all when it comes to project management software and how companies utilize it. It's imperative that you at least try to explore these different types of software and see what you can do so that by the time you onboard to the company, you at least have some idea of how this works. Even if you don't know the software, you should know the structures of what happens in the software. In your software, you're gonna need some key essential information. You're gonna need to know the start and end date of this project. You're gonna need to know who's involved in this project, the resources, the people that actually have to do the work. You're gonna wanna know the why behind this project. Like what's the purpose? Is there a brief? Is there a charter? Is there a scope? Am I developing it? Was it given to me? All these things are found in your project management software, whether you add it in there or it was provided to you when you were assigned the project. You wanna add the different tasks, everything that needs to get done. You need to make sure you know who is doing it. You need to make sure you know the duration of how long it takes to complete that task. You want to know any type of predecessors connected to that task. So what should happen before this happened? What should happen after this happened? And one of the biggest things you want to know is the percent complete. Where are we in this whole project? Where are we in the specific task? Now, when I walked you through Trello, I was showing you the free version of what you can do. But on the paid version, it allows you to add all these other elements to maximize your project experience. Whatever company that you're part of, I am almost positive, they will have the premium version of the software and it's up to you to play around with it and immerse and immerse yourself in there so you fully understand how this works. Now, what I wanna know is what type of software are you currently using at your job? And if you're not a project manager yet, have you heard of any of these software? Have you used something else? Let me know. I wanna explore and play around with all of these. I will say even though I've been introduced and I'm familiar with the different types of software that I mentioned earlier, I believe that I'm strongest in Workfront and Trello. I love them, okay? If there was one that I still want to learn and play around with, it would be Jira. And if there was one that I feel is just too much to handle, I would say ServiceNow because it just has so much other stuff in there. With that said, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your support. You could be anywhere in the world right now and you decided to be right here with me learning about project management. Kudos to you. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Lola the Manager. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time. Thank you.